who do I see here? Are you someone who wants to become a developer? Someone who is struggling to understand what steps you need to take to become a developer? If so, this video is right for you. I created this video for you based on my seven years of being a Salesforce developer and last three years of teaching Salesforce development. Are you excited to find out what they are? So I got eight steps for you. All right. And I'm so happy that you're on this mission to become a developer because that's actually my mission is to help be people become developers. I think being developer is crucial. It's an essential skill in this day and age, just like it's essential for anyone to have a driving license or to speak English or to use US dollars. This is just what everyone needs to do right now. If you are a developer, life becomes so much more pleasant, so much more easy. That's why I want more people to be developers. So before I get into the steps, I want to tell you a, bit, a little bit about myself. First, I studied Bachelor of Commerce at the University of Toronto in Canada. I spent four years in Canada. Shout out to anyone who is watching this video from Canada. Then a couple of years later, I went for an MBA at the University of Virginia. I spent $180,000 in the process of getting my MBA. This was for tuition and cost of living. It's a crazy amount of money, right? And after I finished my MBA, um, I was working as an MBA consultant for Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield here in Maryland. And one of, my, one of my projects was to help the sales team better appreciate, make better use of Salesforce because they bought Salesforce, but the sales team was not really using it. So I went there as a trainer and I started learning more about Salesforce. It blew my mind away. I thought this was an amazing technology and I couldn't understand. This is so cool and why I was missing out on this and why I spent $180,000 on my MBA but without much thought without with conviction that this was the future i decided to make a career pivot and i was on a mission to become a salesforce developer so it was live at first sight and today i can see i can tell you guarantee you that this was the best decision of my life and i'm convinced that and i'm so happy that i have been a salesforce developer and today my mission is to help others become salesforce developers my mission is to help you become a salesforce developer are you ready for my steps for my suggestions let's go let's keep watching so today i have two children so they're my biologic biological children but besides them i also have a lot of salesforce children here is my class i taught salesforce at a native american reservation in oregon i lived i lived two weeks at a native american casino and i was teaching salesforce to the locals uh, they were both native americans and whites who lived in the locality of pendleton next i want to take my teaching to the next level. So I started teaching at Montgomery College in Maryland. Montgomery College is the largest community college in the state of Maryland, over 60,000 students, and they started their Salesforce developer courses just with my support. And I was the first instructor and I enjoyed it so much. I wanted to take my course even further. I wanted to set up a life transforming course, not just like technical teaching Apex course, but I want to teach a course where someone came in with no technical background and came out with enough knowledge to become a Salesforce developer. So that's why I started the Salesforce Developer Bootcamp. My first class was in 2019. I had about 20 students. They came from, from Canada, US, Europe. They were practically all of them were immigrants. All of them were career changers. And thankfully, almost all of them got Salesforce jobs. And so today, I'm still teaching. Now we have more people teaching. We have a lot of instructors. We have much, much better course material. And I'm so happy that I've been able to help a lot of people becoming Salesforce developers and in the process, change their life. Are you ready to hear about the eight steps to become a Salesforce developer? Let's go. Step number one is you need to earn five Salesforce admin related. First one is the administrative certificate. Second one is the advanced administrative certificate. The third one is the app builder certificate, the sales cloud consultant, and finally the service cloud consultant. Okay. These are all certificates where you don't need to know any coding knowledge. Okay, with just clicks, you, you can pass the certificates, but you just need to know where to click, where to look for the information. Based on the resources on YouTube, Udemy, Plural site, you can prepare for these certificates. Step number two is I highly recommend you run your life on Salesforce because this will make Salesforce super personal for you. And once it's personal, it'll be fun for you to learn Salesforce. For example, this is how I run my life on Salesforce. I love real estate. I own a couple of rental properties here in Maryland. And I track ten and property information in Salesforce. I, I know what day they move in. I know where they work. I know how much their salary is. I know if they pay the rent on time. I know how profitable the property is. What's the ROI? What's the return in cash? What date I bought the property? And through which mortgage company I bought it for? What's the HOA amount? How do I pay the HOA? A lot of crucial information I can track in Salesforce. All right. And without Salesforce, I wouldn't be able to manage my properties. So my question to you is, do you have a hobby 
or a side income that can make use of Salesforce. If you do, that's awesome. Let's start using Salesforce for your personal life because everything you will learn, you will be implementing in that your personal work. It'll just make your learning so, so, so much more fun. Next thing. So here's my view of my rental properties and like I have some dashboards and the tenants. Salesforce really, really helps me. Please make sure to use Salesforce to manage your hobby. It'll both be important for your hobby and also it'll make learning really, really fun and fast. Step number three. I highly recommend you use Salesforce uh, to create a personal portfolio. Personal portfolio is something very common for web developers. And if you ask any web de developer, they can give you their portfolio so you can see what kind of work they've done. It's like their resume, right? But in Salesforce, this is something quite new. Uh, I've seen very, very few people who have portfolios. If you do create a portfolio, it'll help you stand out, okay? And I'd like to show you a couple of examples of portfolios. Uh, the first portfolio is by my current student, IPD. Here you can see her picture, amazing Giphy her certificates, favorite code, and some experience that she has. And then you can see the about me section, the photos. Very nice, right? Very, very nice. And here about her work experience and then some of her projects. Very cool, right? And here you can even click on a link of her and it's nicely posted on GitHub. Very nice, right? So that's IPD's personal portfolio, portfolio this is jungle's personal portfolio look at the nice color matching beautiful beautiful right so simple so beautiful feels very professional and similar similar i pity she has an about me section amazing right that she's a fulbright scholar and her experience and projects next this is argens you can see he's a manly guy darker colors square very rectangular shapes very nicely he even has a contact me button so if you want to invite him for an interview you can invite him all right very cool right this, is, this will be very fun as you and as you learn more things you can keep adding things to your portfolio all right and when you apply for jobs this will be a very nice thing to talk about the fourth thing i recommend you do is you you, you need to study for and pass a platform developer one certificate it's not as scary as you think and you don't need to know 100 percent of the material to pass if you know at least 65% of the material, you'll pass. Even 70% of the material is okay. You don't need to know 100%. You can find a lot of good practice tests online on Quizlet, Google Online. Also, you can. there are other providers of PD1 certificate mock exams. There are a lot of good resources online that will help you study for the exam, okay? And just pass it. In the process of studying for the exam, you learn a lot about Apex, the pract best practices of coding. Next, I suggest you study for the Scrum Master Certificate. This is super easy compared to the other certificates I've listed so far. The significance of the certificate is not itself, but the knowledge you gain. You need to understand this agile process. You need to know the essential 10 terms in an agile work setting. What is a sprint? What is a point? What is a story? What is a Fibonacci sequence, etc. If you know these 10 terms, you're good. Now we're on to step five. It is very important now that you have the admin certificates now that you have the portfolio now that you have the basics of apex knowledge to put it to test let's improve you let's put you to challenge by finding you volunteer opportunity and there are a lot of good websites you can go to for volunteer opportunities the first one is volunteer match all for good catch a fire salesforce reddit you can go there you can find job postings actually of people saying i'm looking for salesforce administrator who can help me out a couple of hours a week and you can see the mission of the organization and if you like it apply for it talk to them it'll be great next you can seek out projects on upwork.com if you go to upwork.com you type in like salesforce apex you can see job postings for example this person is looking for salesforce salesforce flow expert is willing to pay 79 to 125 dollars an hour and then this person is looking for help with salesforce admin updates and this person is looking for salesforce consultant for full service agency you have a whole bunch of job postings you can apply for you might not get everyone you probably will not get every single application you'll apply for but you might get one from 20 and, the, and from that you learn a lot you learn so much it'll really accelerate your learning because you'll be adrenaline under the under the adrenaline you'll be under the pressure and the client will be asking you things clarifying things and you learn a lot in the process right and the third way you can get your admin and dev experiences by connecting to your local nonprofits. Talk to them. Hey, I'm looking for Salesforce admin experience. Is there something I can help you with? A lot of these nonprofits cannot afford 
to hire sales source professionals at $75, a $100 an hour. And here they can hire you, right? They have nothing to lose. If, if you work in a sandbox, if you, they can test your things in the sandbox before they deploy to production, there's nothing they can lose. So talk to them, okay? You'll be surprised by how much more demand there is for your skills than you think. All right, let's go to step number six. I highly recommend that you join your local developer group or a local admin group to become a Salesforce developer. It is essential that you embrace the Salesforce community. You need to go to the meetups. You need to meet the local leaders, meet other people who are a couple of years ahead of you. Meet other people who are also at the same level as you. You can inspire each other. You can help each other. Right? I used to go to a lot of VC developer group meetings and I felt I was the newbie. I felt everyone was super experienced and I was a newbie and I felt like I was the odd duck there. But I kept going. I really liked the people I met there. They were super nice, although they were many years ahead of me. And I met recruiters there. I met developers there. I made, made friends there. And some of them later on helped me in their in my life. So I highly recommend you go to your developer group if you have not done so. So here, you can go to this website, trailblazercommunitygroups.com. And when you're there, just put in the city you're in. For example, I'm in Washington, D.C. And then here I can see the groups that are in Washington, D.C. For example, the admin group, and here I can see their past meetings. They had a admin group party. That's amazing. So it looks like they've been meeting quite frequently. All right. And this was a meeting held at Barcode. Wow, that's awesome. All right. So please make sure to attend your local developer group meetup. Step number seven is once you land a job as a Salesforce developer as an admin, you will faint, face instances when you don't have enough knowledge to answer the issue you're working with. Okay, maybe you've exhausted Google and you have exhausted your colleagues, So you, but you still need to solve it. You need to solve that issue. So what can you do? The best place to go or answer it is Stack Exchange. All right, Stack Exchange is a great place. So here's a Salesforce Stack Exchange. Go here if you have not done so make sure to register you can click this button to ask a question for example you say i'm stuck on this error and then you hear you give description you can post a screenshot of the issue be try to be as detailed as possible because then you'll get better answers you get quicker answers your question might be banned or downloaded the first few times that you post but it's okay keep persisting you'll get better and better at asking questions the way you ask questions on texting has to be very specific very particular and it takes time to get to get used to it right but just keep persevering you'll be really good at it and so my challenge for you is go into stack exchange every single day read other people's questions upload them download them comment if you like someone's answer all right and as you keep participating in the discussions there stack exchange will start giving you points and before you know it you'll get 100 points all right so please make sure to get 100 points all right so that's step number seven are you excited about step number eight yes step number eight is to continue on your learning path it is essential that you find a technical mentor someone who is already an experienced developer and they can guide you on what next steps you need to take what topics you need to focus on should you focus on learning javascript and lwc or should you focus on learning apex as a developer do you need to know flows if so how much time should you fo focus on learning flows or is it better if you focus on learning LWC? So these are kind of questions you can discuss with the mentor. So, and also when you're stuck on certain issues, development questions, a mentor will be really, really good for you. Something that you can, you're stuck on for 30 minutes, uh, one hour, they can solve probably in one or two minutes. And a great place to find mentors is Upwork.com. Similarly, just like I was searching for a project, you can go into an Upwork and be a vendor of your services. I mean, you can be a, a buyer of, and other developer services. So you can say, hey, I'm looking for a mentor who's based in US, who has three or more years of experience that I'm willing to pay about $40 an hour. And you can talk to a couple of people and if you like someone, you can set up weekly recurring meetings with them. I highly recommend you find a technical mentor, right? It will accelerate your learning path. When I was learning Salesforce, I didn't have a mentor. And it was a painful process. I was reading books about Java. I was learning about JavaScript. 
and I was all over the place. It's a miracle that I persevered and became a developer. There were a lot of instances when I thought about giving up. I didn't give it serious thought because I never give up. But still, a lot of people might give up. And I don't want you to be the ones who do give up. Right? That's why if you find a technical method, they can make a learning path much more smooth and accelerated. So I promised you there were eight steps to become a developer, but I actually have a bonus for you. There's a ninth step. And the ninth step is you need to apply for jobs and get that developer job, all right? You might feel like you need to keep learning more. You, there's still some things you don't understand. You might feel that you are underprepared. You don't deserve it. Forget about it, okay? You need to apply for jobs. You need to apply, apply, apply. You will get that job. You will work hard. You will improve on each interview. You will know what your mistakes are. And after five interviews, you'll be really, really good. The important thing is you need to apply you need to track your mistakes, record yourself. And what's the best place to track your mistakes? Of course, in Salesforce. Each job application is an opportunity. And your goal is to get that opportunity to close one. Sooner or later, you will get the job. Okay, it's a matter of time. But you need to focus, you need to keep applying, you need to do the other things that I've been talking about. So now let's sum it up. So here are the nine steps to become a Salesforce developer. The first one is you need to earn the five develop five admin certificates. Next, you need to make Salesforce personal, like I run Salesforce, well, just like I run my real estate business on Salesforce, you could run your hobby on Salesforce. Number three is create a portfolio on Salesforce. Number four is pass the PD1 certificate and try to pass the Scrum Master certificate if you have time. If not, just make sure to understand the topics that are covered in the certificate. Number five is get admin and develop experience by volunteering as a Salesforce professional for your local nonprofit. Number six is make sure to join the Salesforce developer community group. Number seven, Salesforce action is your friend, right? Make it your home, bookmark it, make it your homepage, log in there every single day, right? Stuff will slowly, slowly make more sense. Number eight, find a technical mentor. The person will accelerate your learning path by 10 times. Okay, just like I've been giving you eight steps on what to do to become a developer, there's much, much more you can do. There's certain intricacies, there's certain issues you might be stuck on. And so if you have a mentor, it will super accelerate your learning path, okay? And number nine, apply for jobs. Apply for jobs, persevere. You will get that coveted Salesforce job. How does it sound? It sounds amazing, right? So once you do get that Salesforce job, make sure to leave a comment. Tell me about your job. Tell me about your success. I'd love to hear from you. And I hope to run into you at some Salesforce conference or a local Trailblazer community group meeting. And please make sure to subscribe to this video. Leave a comment. Like this video. Your support means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye.